Hey, we'll look like with, with just kind of the changes that you guys are doing for mini camp and just the benefits you guys are getting towards being more catered to uh, classroom work. Yeah, look, this year has is, is been a little bit of an adjustment, um, but we're we're trying to get number one. The priority uh, is is the weight room and and making sure guys are having a chance to get in the best shape that they need to be in. Um, and then as the schedules progress, we've been able to to really try to maximize their time with on field individual fundamental work and then also classroom work and. Um, kind of removing the team element for now away from it. Uh, so the schedule's worked out well. Uh, you know, I know we call this week mini camp, and there, there are certain things that that uh, that involves, and yet the schedule hasn't changed too much from what they were doing a week ago or two weeks ago or what they're doing this week. So since this is the mini camp, this is still sort of mandatory, quote unquote, or or not, quote unquote. <laughs> No, th this is mandatory. This 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 three day window is, um, and we're one hundred percent here uh, in attendance. And, and this will be the final week that you guys do anything this off season before training camp. Yeah, we'll have the rookies here still, um, oh. and and they'll go through what we typically do with them before we let them go. But um, but yeah, this is uh, we've had we've had really good numbers. Uh, relative to our guys working out. Uh, I've been real impressed with uh, really most everyone. Uh, this rookie class has done a good job. Um, you know, we'll have a chance to evaluate it, obviously a lot more and thoroughly once we start training camp. Hey, Sean, was there anything you took away from Bill Parcells and how he handled a quarterback competition in the offseason and training camp with the Cowboys? Yeah, look, it was different then, but, you know, we – Bill used to say, and I think it holds true today, we pay attention to everything. You pay attention to just what you see without any predisposed thoughts. You know, we'll have uh, – we'll try to do our best relative to the reps that we have during the, during the training camp and during the preseason games, and then uh, kind of go from there. Hey, Sean, how strange or how weird is it with Drew not being around? Is it – does it feel different after all this time? Um. I don't look, I, I think there's not one specific thing. Um, you know, periodically he's poked his head in the building. He's been in town for running some errands or, 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 or doing some things maybe in a business manner, but um, you know, it, 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 there hasn't been that moment where, uh, and I'm sure there will be, but there hasn't been that moment here in the off season necessarily. John, I know that the league has a goal of, I think, 85% vaccination for, uh, for players for the start of training camp. How much do you talk with your team about that? Do you think you'll get there and just the importance of it? Yeah, look, Bo and our training room, that those guys have done a great job. Uh, we're, you know, at 100% in the building with staff and coaches and personnel, tier one and two, and, uh, and, we're real encouraged with our numbers relative to the team. I, I do think we'll get to the, the 85% that that number that we're hearing. Um, so that's encouraging. Um, but I think it, it hasn't been one big, you know, team meeting or any one specific thing, but it's been more education one-on-one uh, -on -one time. And I think the guys in the training room uh, headed up by Bo and those guys have, have really done a great job. John, I'm sure you saw that uh, Jim Fossil passed away. Do you have any thoughts just from your time working with him? Yeah, I, I, I kind of caught me off guard today. I, I think everyone, uh, because of the nature of his death, and, and, you know, he gave me a great opportunity back in, in 1999 to be uh, not only the quarterback coach, but then the year later to be the play caller and offensive coordinator. It's first time for me in this league, and, um, you know, that, that – uh, is something that you never forget. And, and he and I had a real good relationship. Um, his son uh, and, and obviously his other uh, family members will, will carry on his legacy, but um, he made a, a big impact uh, on a lot of people. And how tempted were you this off season to try to be more normal with OTAs and mini camps given, you know, there's a quarterback battle and there's a lot of 
uh, holes kind of along the roster as far as starting jobs and such that you haven't had in the past? Yeah, I, listen, I like the roster, and, and I don't see as many holes maybe as, as, as others. Um, there's certainly some positions that, that we're still working working on. Um, but, you know, we pay attention to the, the current climate and then what are our objectives, and then, uh, you know, what are we going to try to accomplish during the preseason? And it's, it's, it's real easy to keep turning the page, but, uh, but I think, you know, last year was different, and uh, we understood that this year will be a little different as well. Um, but, you know, the key is just being ready when, when the season starts. Sean, are you using this week for for uh, free agent auditions at all or, like, tryouts or anything like that, like you might do in a, in a yeah, mini we, setting? We, we, would have, we would have tryouts, but, um, but it wouldn't be auditions – you know, it would be when you're not having team drills, you're not necessarily bringing in. So right. it would be more on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And Sean, I know that Alvin said that um, this maybe non-traditional is more mentally challenging in the classroom because you all aren't on the practice field. Is that a good thing? Maybe since Drew isn't here and he was the person who kind of spoke the same language as you to concentrate more on the classroom with, with guys like Alvin and everybody who's going to be maybe more of a leadership role on the offense? Yeah, I don't think it, I don't think there's any benefit plus or minus relative to Drew being here and not being here. We'd be very much on the same schedule uh, if Drew were here. Um, these guys are throwing. I think uh, Jameis and Taysom are doing a great job with the skilled players, the running backs, the tight ends, the receivers. They're getting a lot of route work done. Um, and each day the, the focus shifts a little bit, but again, most importantly, the guys are training and uh, when they pull up and park in the facility, um, you know, they're, they're, they're coming to work on their bodies and, and they're coming to work on uh, their position fundamentals. And, and, and I think that uh, so far that's gone well. Which I'm when, you have, when you have two quarterbacks competing, is there any benefit to having one maybe win that battle earlier so you can start building around them? Or is enough of the offense the same that it, it doesn't make much of a difference? Yeah, I, I, both of these guys have, have been here now. So uh, I think the, the, the key is, is, is getting as much of the, the work and, and evaluation reps that you can for both of them. Um, that'll be a challenge, but we'll find a way to do it. Sean, what stood out to you most about Jameis Winston's approach this offseason, maybe even different than last year when, when you know, he was taking it as a, a learning and getting the feel of things? Any, anything in particular that has impressed you about his attitude or approach? Yeah, both those guys. Um, when you talk about Jameis and Taysom, both of them are, are extremely hard workers. Uh, both of them, uh, you know, are, are doing a great job leading. and. Uh, they're working together, organizing uh, the throwing sh sessions. And, uh, you know, I've talked before about the leadership in that room. And uh, I, I think they're doing a really good job. Sean, can you give us any insight into Dre Kirkpatrick's visit and if you guys are planning on bringing in any more cornerbacks this week? Um, yeah, we, we would only just report when, when we do. Um, and, and, you know, I'd leave it at that. Um, we've had a few players in for workouts. We'll list them and we'll kind of go from there. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to project who else might be coming. Sean, you've spoken in the past about, like, the emphasis you guys put on development. Um, how would you kind of assess that uh, the development of that young receiver core kind of behind Mike Thomas, um, you know, the guys coming up the last couple of years? They're doing well. They're doing very well. And, and part of that was – you know, a number of those guys played more snaps last year because of injury, and uh, and I'm encouraged. I, I like the way that room is is coming together. Um, you know, there there are a few guys that got more snaps a year ago because of some of our depth issues, and and I think that's that's helped them. I know the cap situation this offseason kind of prevented y'all from maybe going out and like signing a, a you know expensive player, but did their development kind of play a part in, in y'all? You know, largely staying with what you have. Yeah, look, I like I like the the room. I, I like where we're at, and and I like the the.
the guys that we have that are that are here on our roster. Um, Sean, obviously a lot of production needs to be replaced in terms of losing Trey Hendrickson along the defensive line. Uh, for a guy like Mark Davenport in his fifth year, would it be fair to say the expectations are a little raised for him? And, you know, what's the state of, you know, the pass rushing group in general in your eyes? I think it looks good. Uh, you know, the addition of, of some of these younger players to the room ha have helped. Uh, certainly Marcus will be healthy as we get started. Peyton's doing well training. Um, you know, we feel like uh, that, that position, that position group, we've added some depth and uh, certainly uh, Trey played extremely well for us. And, in you know, it won't be just one person. There'll be a series of players that, that pick up for some of that production. So, um, but we feel good about the direction we're moving at as a team relative to our defensive line. Coach, how different will the offense have to be depending on who the quarterback might be? Or will they basically be doing much of the same things? Yeah, I, I think to your point earlier, I think it, it could vary based on who the quarterback is. Uh, we've always tried to look closely at the strengths of, of our players, what they do well, and we'll build a, a, a little bit around uh, that player accordingly. And, and that's something that, that – that we did when Drew first arrived here and we would do with, with either of these two players. How does that, how, how does that affect um, the, the off season battle then? Do you almost call different plays depending on the quarterback that's, that's taking the reps? Yeah, look, there, there's certain things that you might do just specific to one or the other. And yet there's still uh, an, an, an overall philosophical approach that these guys will have learned to play offense, but yeah, I, the, you know, it's not a whole different game plan for each one of them. There, there's certain things that we would do maybe differently with each one, but we'll, we'll work that out. Coach, does the two weeks between the last preseason game and the opener help you as far as making a decision there and kind of going into regular season mode and implementing what you want to do? Well, I don't know that it helps or hurts. It's just, it is what it is. It's the schedule change. It's unique this year. There's a few days required for the players to be off. And then, you know, the, the, the plus would be uh, an additional week to recover from any injury that took place. Um, but we'll approach the third preseason game just like we have in the past. We'll play a lot of, a lot of players. So that, that won't become the new last one. That'll, that'll still be the third one. Does Sean, it, is that does, saying he's uh, he's been kind of focusing on playing Will after playing a lot of Sam last year? Um, what, what's kind of the what would be the adjustment for him making the, the switch to, to that uh, position? I, I didn't hear the beginning of the question. Uh, Zach Bond said he, he's kind of been focusing on playing Will after playing a lot of Sam last year. It's just what, yeah. what the, the biggest. Well, look, of. they're different. Uh, obviously, you're on the field a lot more if you're playing Will, you know, with the amount of nickel the teams are playing that we're playing. Um, it, you know, he's he's someone that has picked things up. And, man, you just there, you, you came away from the season feeling real positive about what you started to see with a few of those guys. He's one of them. Uh, and so it, we feel like we've got added depth there. Um, certainly, we draft a, a linebacker and Pete. And, you know, we've got a, a number of players that uh, that we feel like uh, can help us and then also help us in the kicking game if they're not in, in a starting role. All right. Thank you, guys.